Hey, ladies and germans, how are you all doing? I'm Con Ulrich. And I'm Ring Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we, like I said, are off to the Asia Division, in the Asia Vets, in fact, to see two excellent players play on, where are we, Ryan? Colville, right? This is Colville, indeed. All right, so who's duking it out for our delight today? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have ourselves Colville, playing Ooh. as the Polish Armour Division. And on the right-hand side, we have Water, as the ninth Panzer Division. So we were talking actually up to the end of when we were talking about the last cast, actually after our last cast, that uh, we were really surprised to see the Vintown perform the manner that they did. No spoilers, yeah. but go check that out. Great game. Um, you said everyone should play the second Panzer, didn't you? Yeah. Yes, you did. So why is that, though? Well, second Panzer is really good because they can just kind of do everything. Okay. They got Panzer Fours on A phase, Panzer Threes, etc. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, they're just really great B phase economy. They can just do everything really well, and they have the veteran G. Like, That's mm -hmm. please. Yeah. Well, you said also you said also as well that a, a close second should be playing the Ninth Panzer. So what does the Ninth Panzer do better or worse? What's the issue then? Ninth Panzer, I mean they got the Mortar Three early on. So mm -hmm. for Water in this case, he's got the Mortar Three coming into the middle area mm -hmm. which would be pretty good and it's got the panzer twos which are very finicky to use i mean they can either be great or terrible depending on the map and the location where you deploy them but compared to rin towns they just have better momentum throughout the rest of the match especially with ninth panzer being able to at least spam panzer four j's a minute one b phase hits that is certainly very accurate um, kind of interesting. Both guys deploying the major kind of, let's say, armor piece, and well, armor piece in the Germans' case, and armor pieces in the oh, Poles, yeah. right along that center line. Um, so very, very classic kind of armor. There's a nice central punch with the infantry moving in close support, and it does look like the Poles are taking it very, very casual in the north. Oh wow! Corbo is getting a bunch of tanks and rushing them in one area and bringing a bunch of cheap infantry to cover the map, and he has no artillery classic corbo true true this I... is mm -hmm. this, 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 this... <laughs> it doesn't matter what division corbo plays he always does the same strategy no matter what just just the early tank rush and just try to spam everything everywhere it's it's great so realist stuart stack out combo work uh i'm not confident about that yeah i'm not confident. Freezer. and if that mortar free can set up... it's in a good position if he stays where he is, he can poke away at the tanks at long range. I think it would be more fascinating if he starts taking out some of this infantry here. Yep, that's one squad. And those infantry are just Strojki, so they're, they're, pr they're pretty terrible. I mean, the Panzer and they easily beat them up. Same with Stern Pioneer coming in as well. Is this really just going to come down to this uh, armored blob that Corbo has set up and whether it will work or not? Well, I'll tell you one thing right now, that air power coming in for the poles is going to oh. make that martyr a little bit uncomfortable. Oh yeah, they got the hurricanes. And the hurricanes are pretty much more than enough just by itself to stop that mortar from getting those important shots off. Again, AA being brought mm -hmm. out, which is... Water definitely wants that to protect that rather uh, unprotected mortar, as he's going to be hiding behind the tree line. And that's going to give, that's going to give Corbo time to move up. Yes, it will. My question is, like, to a certain extent, is what can be done? If he can knock out a hurricane and reposition the mortar, like, probably north of its position to try to shoot down at the Stuart, that would be his best bet to try to stop his armor to blob, but it's still, like, that's a lot of armor for one mortar free to take out. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And Stuart to just pound it away, here goes a spar troop. And this is a pretty good punch through from Corbo initially. Hurricane getting a straight from run, and that should be enough to... Oh, he's reloading. Should be enough to force Hurricane back. But it's, it's a second Hurricane, yo. Well, here's the question. He's, gonna, he's just going for that constant stress, isn't he? He's not even really trying to kill it. He's just yeah. trying to, you know, freak it out with fire. Yeah, he just wants that Mortar Free to, you know, run away so he can move out of the Sturridge. And now Sturridge and Stackhound on a pretty good position, because once they get into shooting range of the Marder 3, the Marder 3 is pretty much buggered, as it has Jackal for armor. 
Indeedy do. All right, but we are going to have a pack gun coming on in, looking to cover that road. So once they realize that the martyr is not singing with the choirs of angels, which they should be seeing right about now, because that stack on. Oh no, I was just saying that stack should have line of sight on him. Yeah, he should. Hound. Yeah, stack on just trying to take some down. Pack thirty eight coming in to help and fire your guns, my friends. Nope, never mind. Too late. Too late. Or not. Wow. Model 3 getting run out of potential four tanks at the moment. And Corvo, he's just, he's not really buying anything. He's just a Strovsky all over the place. And buying more Strovsky, because why not? Very true. Very true. Now, what I'm surprised we're not seeing, like, that kind of recon Stewart spam. Well, I really got am. He's got the one, but that's it. it it's just, I suppose you don't really need to, like, it's not like the Desert Rats mm -hmm. recon Stewart, where they have the 50 cows. They're not really... Yeah, great. You really just want to have run hanging around for um, just for the reconnaissance area. It's much better to get stack hounds. That pack yeah, thirty eight died pretty quick. Okay, wow. It did. Yeah. Durance. Yeah, but I didn't expect that to. I mean, that was a full strength pack thirty eight. I don't know. Dick's machine guns from the search. Uh, yeah, I suppose that's true. Yeah. Second Martyr 3 being brought on in, and this is a plus 3 right now for Corbo. Um, yep, smoke comes down to block off the Stewarts. And the German... That's a good smoke. Yes, that's it really, is. That's really good smoke. After Corbo sees that, he's like, nope. Nope, not even gonna, not even gonna bother. We've got Second Mortar 3. Now, if that Mortar 3 can position himself in that northern area, I mean, all he has to do is get range and shoot at the Stewarts. Same time, if a hurricane comes in, the flat gun is not going to be able to protect him, but then a Model 3 and flat gun is going to say, screw you, armored force, we're just going to push down shelf. I'm having none of that business up north. Well, he's at, that's the only place he has any kind of, you know, mm -hmm. presence is down south. Yeah, and also he has a bunch of units behind enemy lines now. It must be a little bit uh, scary for the Panzer Strike and Spar Troop in there. And the two half tracks as well. Like, you're not yeah. going to see them dive back inside that. No, sir. They are outside of that metal coffin. They're going to stay that way. Yeah. As the Staghound begins to also fire upon them, they are going to die pretty quickly. Yep. Here comes part of the armored fist to encourage them to shuffle off to the dead pile. Yeah. We've got more Strachi being brought in, but. The Strachi may be able to get into the town, but. It's, it's really Strotsky, Strotsky are just, yeah, for me, George. They're not there yeah, to get many kills. They're just, they're just here yeah, to support stuff. So it's all down to the armored forces of the Corbo to do all of the killing. I mean, looking down south, as you can see, the Pandagrandir and Flat Gun completely stopped out Strotsky pussy, easy peasy. Mm -hmm. And Pandagrandirs can just, they can take on quite a few Strotskys by himself, just thanks to the uh, high HG value of his MG42s. You know, I've always been kind of interested by that. The fact that they call it HE. I would not really call bullets to be high explosive, but... Um... I think it's just, like... I mean, it's always has been, like, that's a war game. Otherwise, you're, like, the anti-personnel damage is yeah. HE. Yeah, I mean, that's, it, that's fair. A bit weird. Yeah. I'm just griping. Um, transmission damage number another stack. Hound looks like one of the Southern Martyr, th uh, Martyr 3 is getting back into the fray. Ooh. Ooh. Pack gun's gonna pay for it with his life, yo, but that's still a pretty good trade. Oh no, smoke grenade save him, yo. There we go. Hurricane getting stressed out by the flat guns. And the Marder 3 up north gonna be able to shoot this recon stretch, so and the stack count goes down to the Panther Strike up north. What's happening, Corbo? You're losing all your tanks. Yes he is, but at the same time he still is up six hundred points less than, you know, eight minutes into the game. So I can't mm -hmm. gripe too much about it. Yeah, he's he's managed to gain the ground. It's just, is he going to be able to hold it? Because he doesn't really have that much. It's just Trotsky, right? So, you know, he can just kind of, like, sneeze on them and they fall down. And As we're about to see. Well. Uh, yep, Sturm Pioneers. There's a Surrender. Though, to be fair, I would Surrender in a heartbeat, too. I was going up against a Flamethrower. I, I don't want to burn to death. Yeah. I s ex exactly. It's funny during the um first world draw, you know how like the Germans store Stuart goes down up north. You mm -hmm. know how the Germans were like the, tr uh, the trench gun, the American shotgun. Yes. As like inhumane, 
Well, their reason being for the air weapon was that it's your fault if you're uh, in a flamethrower attack or a chemical weapon attack because, you know, you have time to run away. I mean, if you're being shot up like a flamethrower, you know the flamethrower dude's coming. You have time to run away, of course, you know. It's not... It, it's your fault if you get burnt. It kind of, I'm not going to say amusing thing about that at the same time, but it was kind of funny that it was, if memory serves, anybody who was a flamethrower troop, whether he was for allied or central powers, um, they were put to death if they were captured. Yeah, yeah, I can I can understand that. I know in the first world war, water crews were pretty screwed if they got captured. Wait, because, really? Mortar crews? Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't expect that. Yeah, because, you know, all your friends died to the artillery, and those you know, guys are... The direct reason I, I read about it somewhere, I, I can't exactly remember, but I remember mortar crews would be pretty screwed and also he didn't have much in terms of self defense when they got attacked, so they kind of bugged in that regard too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, it's looking pretty good up north. The uh, Pandagon is managing to push through, and yeah, I mean, Corbo's push was pretty strong early on, but he has just lost. Weapons All jammed. Momentum. This steward is probably gonna die pretty quick. Yeah, and it's a, this is good play from Rorta, as he's managed to keep the Mortar Freeze alive. He lost those Mortar Freeze by doing something ballsy, such as trying to engage those tanks at close range. Yeah, and it's probably would have turned a bit differently, but those Mortar Freeze are really just, especially on the area where they are, it's all open ground, are really the deciding point in this, uh, in this engagement. So in this middle engagement, yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Panda Grenadiers are just I mean they're not like great they're just like the regular Panda Grenadiers, but I'm just fighting against Strotsky, it's such a such an easy matchup. Uh it is true, and besides that, actually we're looking at that those quad mounted AA guns and um Middle Earth is getting chewed up quite a bit. <laughs> and there's there's next to no command anywhere on this map for the poles. In yeah, fact, I don't think there is any. Yeah, but I it's just it's just Strotsky. It's just Stro Strotsky everywhere. And and just like vehicles, Corvo, I mean, he's such like a kind of, kind of a run Drake pony, considering his unit. I mean, never like deploys artillery. But, um, yeah. I mean, once B phase it, hopefully you can get something a bit more substantial for, um, for his forces. Oh, B phase has hit. Mm hmm. Oh, yeah, it's B phase. Indeed, you're right. I'm living in the past, Khan. Uh, that's okay, that's why you have the US of A to the south of you. To remind you that sometimes it's better to keep your head in the past. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like the past down south, Khan. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> okay, politics aside, uh, it's a funny stat for you, Khan. So I you do know okay. How... Okay, so go for um, it. The, the flak thing goes down. Mm -hmm. You know how if you go into your statistics and seal division, you can see like the amount, the percentage? Of units I use per category. Yes. So for my for my artillery category, I use six percent of the units I bring out. Six point six percent are artillery units. Corbo okay. said his artillery statistics. His artillery statistics is only three point three percent. Okay. Which is that's pr that's pretty low. That's half the artillery if I've ever used. Oh yeah. Time steel division. And oh he yeah. Says most of it's just like off map or. Doing some mean matches, and I, honestly, I know for you, like you use artillery I love appropriately, it. appropriately, but you're still not going to go run out of your way to do it. I, I, I do love those Saxons, Khan. You can't go wrong with Saxons. You are really all about sex. I understand that. <laughs> oh, tons of it. I'm gonna let that alone. I know I brought it up. I'm not gonna let that alone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at the air power! Yo, a hurricane manages to shoot down a German fighter, and. I mean, the Hurricanes are also a pretty good thing, keeping Corbo in a match, but it does manage to stress out one of the flight guns, and the Mortar 3 up north does get its wrap and jammed. But That's the okay. Sound goes down. I was going to say, the Shrek squad is still there anyway. Rickety wreck yourself before you Shrek yourself. And those half tracks will be more than enough to keep that Streltsky moving back to the west. Mm -hmm. um, we are finally going to see a Command Stewart coming into the north, and, interestingly, another Staghound coming to the south. Let's say those hurricanes are desperate to take out that auto cannon yeah, half track. I, can, I understand. I'm actually rather surprised that they have eyes on it. Yeah, good point. I never really think about that either. But I guess this is throw back to such a ray that they can't see it anymore. Maybe he's blind firing. 
Yeah. No, it's been it was too it was too it's, well targeted. Yeah, it's, yeah. I mean, it's also like machine gun fire. It'd be really hard to to blind fire or such a thing. Though it did happen in the war. It's just something I never really realized until I was an adult. They used to do indirect fire missions with machine guns, mm -hmm. which just sounds insane. Mm -hmm. Um, dual flak thirty six is being brought on out, and it looks like the Fock Wolf is going to go and claim maybe one of these. Maybe. Maybe he's yeah, gonna I mean, get he's, eyes on one. Yeah, he's definitely gonna get that one for sure. Hurricanes are too slow to run away. Well, and it is uh, storm season. And what do you get two? He was in, he's gonna get both. Oh, if he gets two, that's a pretty big blow. Yeah, yes, it is. So it's only two potential hurricane fighters that Coolbo can bring out, and just losing those two now is really. I mean, that's as Coolbo's has a pretty big offensive arm, and Coolbo's. Four, so losing that is that's pretty tough for tough for him. And he's just getting more storage key. I mean, this is definitely like classic Polish play. I mean, all Polish players, I noticed, just spam the storage key because they're cheap. But he just doesn't have anything to back him up down south. He needs he needs armor and other stuff, but he keeps losing all his light vehicles, and he's really just focusing on the light vehicles. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure why. Can he can bring in more heavy equipment? Yeah, I mean, it's B-Face now. He can bring up, he can bring out like a Firefly or Achilles. Bringing up a proper Cromwell now to definitely help out quite a bit. But, um, also artillery be good, but it's just, this is cool what we're talking about. So no Saxons and, you know, those Saxons are kind of important for Pose. Yes, they are. Yeah. yeah. It's not, uh, it's not Kosher and Kobo, Kobo's book. Oh, I, he's he's a uh, never mind. <laughs> I'm not gonna make that comment. That's, that's a can of worms right there. <laughs> uh, as I said, I never really heard that many Asian players celebrating that particular kind of faith. But <laughs> I thought it was gonna be a tourist joke, but oh uh, yes, there was. And I realized it's probably better to back away slowly. <laughs> yeah. We've got two more hurricanes being brought in, as it is a very stormy season, as you were mentioning before. Three of them actually. That the whole bomber still oh, yeah. counts too. Good point. That is also a hurricane plane. I would laugh if one of the... Uh, pol political joke. I would laugh if one of the hurricane pilots was named Daniels. At that point, be Hurricane Stormy. I'd be Stormy Daniels. It'd be great. <laughs> I'd love it. Anyway, um, <laughs> P4 being brought to the north. <laughs> Alright, All right. yeah, we got a P4 finally. That's a, that's a proper tank. We just surprised them now. For the entirety of eighth phase, we did not see a single Panzer II or Panzer I, which uh, you at least see one or two. No joke aside, and the number joke, yeah. Uh huh. From a uh, from length Panzer, but yeah, I'm, I'm really quite surprised about yeah. You're Panzer right. Panzer two down south would be a pretty useful unit to back up where those turn planes and stuff. There was not a deuce in sight. You're right. No, no, no deuce, no Uno, no Panzer. The Flak 36s, I know, I, I, I mean, when they first came out, I was like, these things are completely worthless. I feel like you have to have multiple positions to make them have any kind of consistent worth as an AA piece. Yeah, that, like, yeah, and the both fours are like the, like, the gold standard of an AA piece, you know, reasonably priced, reasonable range. You, you, for 1v1, you want, like, two or three of them to set up a good AA net. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it does do pretty good work. Cromwell goes down there to the mortar. And this is just not looking good for Corbo. Not not one bit. I mean, he he, he uh, flew close to the sun, and now his rings are being burnt off. His Polish Tsar rings, that is. Yes, but uh, thankfully I don't see any winged Tsars here today. But you're right; it does seem kind of very Icarus of him here. Yeah. Um, as things are getting kind of icky. Uh, that mortar three to the north. He's fired all his HEs. He still has about seventy-five percent of his um AP ammo, and that, yeah. my friends, he's taken up fired off what three or four shots and made two kills in the last minute or so. Yeah. It's pretty good. And just those Model 3's alive really gave Corbo from really moving anywhere because Corbo had no long range AT options. And now they've got Panda 4 being brought in, and that Panda 4 is enough to really deal with everything in the middle. Yep. It is about time that we see some sort of armored thrust here coming from yeah. the 9th Panther. They've been taking smacks all through Phase A. And, and Corbo just says, you know what, it ain't worth it. Yeah, yeah. He he he, he risked early on with the gamble and it did not work and like what, five hundred six hundred kill difference, yeah? Yeah, it's like six hundred. And uh looking at the history, yeah, once you get past the five minute mark, it's just I'm blue. 
Yes, Dabu D, Dabu he, dead. He 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 blew it. Martyr, look at that martyr Stiga. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let me see. Oh, Four yeah. tanks, two infantry squads. Yeah, definitely just shut down the entire purse. Also, looking through the history, I don't think Corbo got a single ground recon unit. I mean, I, I kind of understand that, because you need recon and you can just stroke key everywhere, you know? But, but, like, the Polish recon's not terrible. Yeah, I mean... I mean, that's a, that's, that's a thrilling thrilling endorsement saying not terrible, not but yeah. Terrible. But yeah, it still may have been useful to get one or two more recon infantry, just, you know, spot stuff, but Corbo, I mean, just, he plays like Corbo, or he just kind of punches through an area for the best, and it just did not work well for him. And really good play from Walter, just keeping the Mortar Freeze alive, kept him through the entirety of the match. Yes, indeed. Cool as a cucumber, and you know what? He came out with a W. As accurate as a Walter. Yes! Yes, uh, I was going to go for a Bond joke throughout the cast, but it didn't seem to fit, so, uh, yeah. but in any case, um, what's next for us, Rang? No idea. No idea. Well, folks, you know what? We'll, we'll find out with you the next time. We'll be bringing some more Skill Division your way. For right now, though, I'm Con Ulrich. I'm Rang Roo. Take it easy.